How's it going, everybody? Tim here, the Greyhound Guru, back with another Greyhound Bus video. And in this video, I wanted to talk about sleeping on the Greyhound Bus. Now, this is a topic that, surprisingly enough to me, I got a few questions about. Um, people just wanted to know, you know, about sleeping on the bus. Is it easy to sleep on the bus? Some tips for sleeping on the bus? How much sleep can you get? Um, so I just wanted to make this real quick video and give uh, my answer to these questions. Um, me, uh, sometimes I sleep well on the bus, sometimes I don't. Um, typically, if you are on a long trip and uh, the trip goes overnight, typically there's a time on the bus when it gets dark, probably I'd say around about like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, people slowly start to shut up and nod off. After it's been dark for a while, typically people start to, everyone kind of starts going to sleep. Definitely when it gets later, um, midnight, the early morning hours, pretty much everybody on the bus is either quiet or sleeping. Like I said, this is typically, sometimes you will get a bus where there are those one or two idiots who want to talk the whole entire night, or some idiot wants to be on their cell phone and wants to talk all night long. But in general, you'll usually have some hours after dark where the bus kind of you know shuts down and everybody kind of sleeps. During these periods, it's 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 pretty easy to sleep on the bus. I mean, at one in the morning, there's really you know nothing else to do. Um, pretty easy to sleep on the bus. Now during the day, um, you know, if you're trying to sleep, it's a little harder because most people are talking. Um, there's always somebody who has their headphones on, but you can hear their music. There's lots of uh, distractions and noises going on during the day on the Greyhound bus. Not to mention the stops uh, are a bit more frequent, it seems, um, during the day. Uh, so every you know couple hours, you're probably going to stop for a food break or uh, you know stop to get new people on the bus. Um, so it just seems like during the day, there's just a lot more going on. It's a lot harder to sleep. However, um, suggest suggestions for sleeping during the day? Uh, me, uh, usually when I want to, you know, kind of nod off, what I'll do is I'll put my earbuds in and I will listen to something that kind of will put me to sleep. Kind of a noise that will overpower the talking and everything else going on on the bus, but it isn't something that's going to keep me awake. Um, so I might listen to like an audio book, um, that's going to put me to sleep, or I might listen to some music that isn't really kind of like upbeat. I might listen to, uh, you know, uh, maybe like some, cla not classical music, but just kind of some music that's uh, just going to put me kind of, that I'm not really going to pay attention to the music as much as, you know, just going to be lulled to sleep. So that's typically what I'll do. Put my earbuds in and I will just try to find something to listen to that my mind doesn't have to focus in on, uh, but the, has enough noise to it that it masks the uh, noise going on on the bus. And this usually will allow me to kind of drift off to sleep for a while, um, even if the bus is pretty noisy. Uh, another thing I recommend for trying to sleep on the bus, you want to be comfortable. Uh, I recommend bringing like a travel blanket with you. Um, Greyhound buses kind of are either pretty hot or pretty cold. <laughs> um, when they're hot, sometimes when the air is broke, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to deal with that. But sometimes you'll find a driver who likes the bus cold and they'll have the AC crunk up. Um, and this can really kind of hinder your sleeping if you're uncomfortable. So I recommend a little travel blanket. Uh, you can pull that out, you can wrap it around you. And uh, not only does it keep you comfortable, uh, we're typically used to sleeping with something around us. And so it just kind of further puts us in that sleep state. Like it just kind of tells our body, okay, sleep time. And it makes it a little easier kind of to fall asleep. I see a lot of people bringing blankets on the bus and they typically seem to be the people that nod off and stay asleep for hours. So I recommend bringing some form of blanket. Why I say travel blanket is because a lot of times I see people just bringing like a regular blanket from home. These are big, they're bulky. You got to figure out something to do with them. Uh, you know, when you're not using them, they get in the way. Um, I recommend just like a little small travel blanket that can fold up. Um, they're super warm and when you're not using them, you can typically fold them up small, put them in your carry-on, put them in the overhead bin under your seat. They're out of sight, out of mind. You don't have to worry about them. Um, I will put a link in the description box to the type of blanket I'm talking about. 
uh, you know, it's worth it. Spend the t if you're going on a long trip. You know, spend the 10 bucks to have you a nice small blanket that you're not going to have to keep up with for two days. Um, so definitely recommend a blanket. Um, another thing I kind of recommend, this is something I personally don't bring with me, but half the time I wish I had, uh, is just like a little small pillow. Uh, if you're in the window seat and, you know, a lot of times you're trying to sleep up against the window like that, or you take your jacket and ball it up and do it like that. If you had just a little small pillow with you, uh, it would make things a lot easier. It may not help you when you're in the aisle seat. Um, the aisle seat is like the hardest seat to sleep in because you really have nowhere to put your head. But when you're sitting by the window, uh, the, which is what, a lot of the reasons why people always want the window seat, if you do have some form of small pillow, you can prop it up against there and it makes sleeping a lot easier. Um, I don't recommend like a travel pillow, like the ones that go around your neck, because those really aren't, those are more conducive to an airplane than the Greyhound bus. Um, you rarely see people using those. Uh, I recommend just like a small, compact uh, pillow, if you can find one. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll put a link to one of those in the description box as well. Um, the one I found is a little pricey, um, which is why I never use one. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, for a two, three day trip, it might really make it worth it. There have been times, like I said, that I was like, man, I, I would have paid the money to have one right now because it just was very awkward and uncomfortable uh, sleeping uh, on the bus, especially when you have like bony wrists like me. Like, <laughs> just, it's very hard to sleep. But, uh, you know, like I said, I recommend pillow, little small pillow, little small blanket. You might even have one at the house, maybe a little pillow like you have on your couch or something. Just a little, a little small pillow can really help you get to sleep on the bus. Uh, another thing some people try to use, but I don't really care for them, is like the sleep uh, shades you can put on to kind of block out uh, the light. I don't really recommend those, especially on the Greyhound bus, because, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of... I think you need to have be able to open your eyes at an instant on the Greyhound bus and see what's going on around you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I would much prefer have to close my eyes and deal with the light than, uh, you know, just be oblivious uh, sight-wise to what's going on around me. Because trust me, there's people on the bus that'll be peeping that out. And if they know you can't see what's going on, uh, they might, you know, have their hands in your luggage. I don't know. I just personally never use one of those. But some people like them. Uh, you can find those online for pretty cheap. Uh, but I just really don't recommend those. Um, so, like I said, uh, those are just a couple items, uh, a couple things I recommend kind of for sleep. Uh, my best places for sleeping aren't actually on the bus. It's when I have like a long layover. Um, you know, if I have a six, seven, eight hour layover, I'm going to try to, especially if it's overnight, I'm going to try to find a couple chairs and lay out on them. Um, I'm not even going to lie. There's been times I, I laid out on the floor on time <laughs> and use my carry on bag as a, uh, a, as a pillow and napped out for a couple hours. You know, it sounds crazy. It sounds dirty. Uh, but I, that was some of the best sleep I got my whole trip. So, you know, if sleeping on the bus isn't your thing, if you really, uh, you know, just can't nod off on the bus, which some people can't, uh, you know, when you get to the station, even if you have to just find like a little corner and prop up in it and go to sleep, the stations during layovers definitely are an option for getting some sleep. Um, but don't expect to get like eight hours of straight sleep or anything like that. There's usually, even at night, too much going on on the bus uh, to... Uh, stop you and kind of distract you and wake you up now there are some people who can just get on i've seen some people who got on the bus and, and almost slept through their stop they just if you're one of those people well you probably won't be watching this video if you're one of those people because you'll sleep no matter where you are but uh for most of us you know don't expect to get you know a full you know eight hour sleep every night when you're on the bus or if you have like a 12 hour bus trip don't think you're just gonna get on the bus and sleep the whole time away uh, you know, an hour here, an hour there, maybe two hours there is kind of the most you're going to get. If you have a long trip, you will be very tired by the end of the trip because you're not going to get your recommended daily amount of sleep on the bus. It just, it just doesn't go down like that. Um, that's why sometimes I recommend, uh, you know, if it's possible and you have the money, if you want to break your trip up, if you have a two-day trip and you want to break it up into a day, then stop at a, a city uh, you know, get a hotel room, sleep a day or whatever, then get back on the bus, take the second day. Um, that's an option. 
I've done that during some trips and it kind of really worked out. Plus I got the shower. Um, I like how that bird has just felt the need to suddenly start chirping very loudly <laughs> in the middle of my video. But I'm at the end almost anyway. That was just a uh, quick video talking about sleep on the Greyhound bus. Hope it was helpful. I'm Tim, the Greyhound Guru. Uh, if you have any other questions, check out my other videos. Um, I will leave a link in the description box that uh, takes you to the page that shows all my videos. Um, and you can also check out greyhoundbusguru.com and follow me on Twitter at guruofgreyhound.com. All those links will be in the description box. Check them out and you can leave any questions you have in the comment box and I will get uh, back with you ASAP. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day. Happy travels.